Welcome to the lecture series on engineering thermodynamics. I'm giving these lectures as part of MCL 140 course that is engineering thermodynamics at IIT Delhi. Let us begin with an introduction to thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is the science that deals with the interconversion between heat and work and the properties of the substances that are related to heat and work. Thermodynamics originated by addressing conversion of heat to mechanical work and vice versa. However, later it was found that heat can be transformed to other forms of energy. Therefore, it is better to term thermodynamics as the science that deals with energy conversion and the associated properties of substances that are related to the energy conversion processes. In this course, we'll discuss the laws of thermodynamics and their applications to engineering systems. So throughout this course, we'll discuss various processes that occur in engineering equipment, such as steam power plants, gas turbine engines, vapor compression refrigerators, and rocket engines, and many other systems. And in this introductory lecture, let us begin by looking at some of such equipment on which we'll apply the concepts of thermodynamics. The idea to have such an introduction is to familiarize you with various terms that we are going to encounter in our study of thermodynamics. Moreover, some familiarity with the equipment will help you in appreciating the problems that we are going to discuss in the course of our study of thermodynamics. Now, while we are looking at few examples uh, in this lecture, one must note that thermodynamics is applicable to numerous other processes that are not discussed in this lecture. So you should not uh, limit your thinking to the examples that we are going to discuss in this lecture. So our first example of an engineering system where thermodynamics is applied is the steam power plant. Now this figure shows a simple diagram of a steam power plant. So in a steam power plant, what we have is a boiler over here, which is uh, also called as a steam generator. So in the boiler, we feed in fuel, which in steam power plants is coal and coal and air is fed in to this boiler and that heats up water. As a result, of heating of this water, we get high pressure steam. So this high pressure, in fact, superheated steam leaves the boiler and then enters a turbine. Now in the turbine, this high pressure steam expands and in doing so, it does work. And with this work, we drive a generator which produces electricity. The steam exits the turbine as a low pressure steam. And this enters the condenser, which is a heat exchanger. Now in the condenser, the heat is transferred from the steam that has exited from the turbine. And that heat is transferred to the cooling water and this causes the steam to condense. So thermal power plants or steam power plants need a lot of cooling water and therefore they are often located near lakes or rivers and sometimes even cooling water is used. Steam power plants require large quantities of cooling water and hence are often located near lakes or rivers. Sometimes the condenser cooling water which has now become heated and due to heat transfer from the steam is actually recovered by cooling part of this water by using a cooling tower where part of this cooling water leaving the condenser is evaporated and you can recover some of the water for cooling purposes. So in the condenser uh, you feed in the low pressure steam and the output is the condensate and that is what leaves the condenser. Now the pressure of this condensate is increased by a pump and that enables the condensate to flow back into the boiler over here. 
and in the boiler this condensate is then heated first in an economizer which uses the combustion products in coal combustion to first heat up till hot water and then this uh, water vaporizes and you get a high pressure steam and this cycle continues. Now the air used for fuel uh, combustion is also preheated using these exhaust gases and that uh, part is called the air preheater and eventually the exhaust gases are purified and released into the atmosphere. So typically the steam power plants use coal as the fuel. However, the same cycle can be used in a nuclear plant as well. And in nuclear power plant, this boiler is replaced by the nuclear reactor. And the fuel is not coal, fuel is the fissionable material such as uranium or plutonium. And the same process is used in a nuclear submarine. So the nuclear submarine also works on the steam cycle where the coolant of the reactor is actually used to heat up the water and get steam and that steam actually drives the turbine and the turbine drives the propellers. And obviously for a nuclear submarine, seawater is used as the coolant. So there are few terms that are important and these are terms that we are going to see later in the course of study. So once term we have seen superheated uh, steam, then we see that uh, we are using a turbine to perform work and then we are using a condenser to condense this steam to back into liquid. Now let's look at another example and this example is of the gas turbine that is shown in this picture over here. So gas turbines are used where you need large amount of power but you have only small physical size that is available to you. So examples include jet engines on aircraft, even ship engines, helicopter engines and small power plants. Many times these power plants based on gas turbine engine are used in combination with the steam power plant. So gas turbines are different from steam power plants because instead of water in steam power plant, here we are using air. So in this figure, you can see an illustration of the gas turbine. So gas turbine consists of a compressor which takes in air from atmosphere and compresses it to high pressure air. And this high pressure air is then injected into a combustion chamber and simultaneously fuel is injected into the combustion chamber and due to combustion the temperature increases and high pressure and high temperature products of combustion leave the combustion chamber and enter the turbine. Again in the turbine these combustion products expand and they do work and this work is partly used to run the compressor with this coupling of turbine and compressor with this shaft and the remainder is used to run the generator and this is how you use a gas turbine to produce electricity but in aircraft you don't have a generator so instead what is done is that you expand the gases enough 
to just run the compressor and rest of the gas is expanded through a nozzle which results in high velocity jet which leads to thrust and in jet engines sometimes additional fuel is added and burned and that gives you additional thrust and this section is called the afterburner now let us look at the third example of an engineering system where we'll apply thermodynamics and that is the example of a domestic refrigerator specifically uh, we mean the vapor compression refrigerator so in the vapor compression refrigerator what we have is we have a condenser section a evaporator section then we have a compressor and we have an expansion valve so what happens in a refrigerator is that our aim is to remove heat from a refrigerated space which is at low temperature and dump heat to the ambient air which is at higher temperature and in this process we need to do some work and that work is done by the compressor so this figure shows a schematic of the vapor compression refrigeration cycle that is used in domestic refrigerators so what happens over here is that the refrigerant enters the compressor over here as a low pressure but slightly superheated vapor then in the compressor the vapor is compressed and it leaves the compressor as high pressure vapor then this high pressure vapor enters the condenser section where it exchanges heat with the ambient air so heat is transferred to the ambient air so condenser section is essentially is essentially a heat exchanger so the refrigerant exits the condenser as a high pressure liquid and this high pressure liquid then flows through an expansion valve where it undergoes expansion and this expansion valve is also called a throttle so in this throttling process some of the liquid actually flashes into vapor and the remaining liquid is now at low pressure over here and this low pressure liquid then enters the evaporator section where it picks up heat from the refrigerated space which is another heat exchanger which takes in heat from the refrigerated space and as a result this low pressure liquid vaporizes and becomes this superheated vapor slightly superheated vapor and as a result you get this refrigeration effect that means you are taking out heat from a low temperature space so in a domestic refrigerator that is shown over here so the compressor and the motor are present in at the bottom over here and they are hermetically sealed in an housing to prevent leakage of the refrigerant now this uh, compressor compresses the refrigerant and that refrigerant goes into the condenser section which is an heat exchanger where air flows over this uh, condenser section and removes heat from this hot refrigerant and by natural convection and after that this refrigerant enters this capillary tube which acts as a throttling valve
and the evaporator is present in this freezer section where the refrigerant picks up heat from the freezer and vaporizes and then enters back into the compressor section and that is how a domestic refrigerator works. So in this lecture we have looked at few examples uh, of systems where energy conversion takes place. For example, in the steam power plant energy conversion takes place from heat to mechanical work. This mechanical work is used to run a generator and produce electricity. Then in a gas turbine engine again we use the heat due to combustion of fuel and air to run a turbine and that turbine does shaft work which is used to run a generator if you're using the gas turbine for power uh, generation purposes or to produce high velocity gases to get thrust in aircraft engines. And lastly, we've looked at the example of a vapor compression refrigerator where we pick up heat from a refrigerated space and dump it into the ambient air and in the process we do some additional work. So essentially we are using work to transfer heat from a low temperature space to a high temperature ambient air. And why do we need to dump this heat? This is what we are going to study later in the course. But these are not the only examples where we can apply thermodynamics. For example, we have seen two examples for power generation that is gas turbine and the steam power plant but there are other ways to achieve power generation without using the equipment involved in power plant and the gas turbine engine so for example one example that comes to my mind is the fuel cell so in fuel cell again we convert chemical energy of fuel that is hydrogen and oxidizer that is oxygen to electrical energy but this is achieved through a pair of redox reactions. So it does not involve this turbine, condenser and boiler. So again, thermodynamics is equally applicable to systems such as fuel cells. Similarly, the vapor compression refrigeration cycle is not the only way to achieve refrigeration. You can build a refrigerator using the thermoelectric effect as well and thermodynamics is also applicable to such processes. So these are not the only examples where the thermodynamics is applicable and there are multiple ways you can achieve the same effect but using different other processes and thermodynamics is applicable wherever there is conversion of energy from one form to the other. So this is a quick introduction to three different engineering equipment that uh, we are going to discuss later in our study and in the description below I have provided uh, three interesting videos which explain the working of these uh, equipments in more detail and you can see those videos by clicking the links that are provided in the description below.